Peter and John are just ill a lame man. Now he held on to Peter and the crowd came rushing by. Where Peter is going to explain how this man came to be healed. Yesterday we, we looked at the healing, so today we are going to look at the how. Hi students of the word, how are you? Hope you are having a great time and getting much from this. If you are new to this channel, I am Leroy Daly of Blogging About the Word. On that website and on this YouTube channel, I teach Christians how to better understand their Bibles. I utilize the Word to explicate the Word, line upon line, precept upon precept, word upon word, here a little, there a little. Precepts must be on equally corresponding precepts or else we will have confusion, misinformation. So today, we're going to look at how Apostle Peter healed this lame man. Our major scripture comes from Acts 3 verse 11 to 21. So Apostle Peter had just healed a man that was born lame. And while he held on to Peter, the people came by. As I said before, in a previous Bible study, when people behave in this manner, it provides us with an opportunity to tell them about Jesus Christ. Listen as Peter explains. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wandering. Acts 3.11 so in this instance, that's exactly what Apostle Peter did. He utilized this opportunity where people was baffled and amazed by what happened to the layman to preach Christ to them. He continues, and when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people. So he responded to the people. Ye men of Israel, why marvel at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power, our holiness, we had made this man to walk? Acts 3 verse 12. Note by Peter's comments that he wasn't taking any credits for the healing of this lame man. He made it clear that the lame man wasn't walking because of his power or his holiness. Then Peter skillfully introduced Jesus Christ into his narration. He says, The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, had glorified his son Jesus, whom he de delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. Acts 3.13 Apostle Peter continues to speak to the people of our Lord, for he reminds them of their betrayal of him. But he denied the Holy One and the just, and desire a murderer to be granted to you, he said. Acts 3.14 When did this happen? At his trial. This is when this happened. No, the scripture said, and they killed the prince of life. I know it's a bit contradictory because how can you kill the prince of life? He's the prince of life, so how can he die? And he gave up his own life to save us from sin. And the scripture says, And kill the prince of life whom God had risen from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. Acts 3.15 So people, Peter continues to explain Christ and what Christ did and how the people um, responded to him. Nevertheless, Peter didn't, did, still, he didn't take any credit for the healing of the lame man. Instead, he explained in the scripture verse immediately be below how he was healed. This is what he said. And his name, that's the name of Jesus, the Son of God, through faith in his name hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know, yea, the faith which is by him 
had given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Acts 3.16 Alright, let us dissect this verse. Peter, Peter said a number of things here. First, he, he, he informed us that through faith in Jesus' name, this man is made strong. And he said the, lay, the lame man was known by everyone. Then he went on to say the faith which is by Jesus had given this man perfect soundness in the presence of you all. This faith that Peter speaks about, whose faith is it? Is it the faith of the lame man? Or is it Peter's faith? Or is it somebody else's faith? Was it John? And it says the lame man was known by everyone. Meaning that for the life of this man, everyone knew that he was lame and couldn't walk. And this is important and I'm pointing it out here because as we continue, you will see the relevance of it. And secondly, he reiterate that the faith which is by Jesus had given this man perfect soundness in the presence of you all. So how did this happen? Now let's continue. And as we continue, we will answer all these questions. And now, brethren, this is Peter speaking. I want that through ignorance he did it, as did your rulers. Now, he's making reference here of them um, betraying Christ and taking a murderer. That's what he's talking here about. But then now, he hinted at something bigger than them all. Because he says, but those things which God before had shewed by the mouths of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he had so fulfilled, Acts 3 8. So Peter is saying to them that God spoke about this, the suffering of Christ, through all his prophets coming down through the ages. But those prophecies were fulfilled when you did what you did to Christ. That's what he's saying. Earlier, Apostle Peter advised the people that in order to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, they should repent, baptize, and receive. That was in the previous chapter, in Acts 2.38. But now, he supplies a different procedure to, um, to enjoy the remission of sins. For the same people, but now he's providing a different procedure for them to receive remission of sins. Listen as he tells them, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Acts 3.19 So we see that the same procedure doesn't work for everything. It was different for the receipt of the baptism of the Holy Ghost than it is now for the remission of sins. So you have the ends in this case justify the means. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. And this preaching took place in Acts 2.38. So see the previous Bible study and you will hear the preaching of Christ in that. I'll include a link in the description below to that. That happened on the day of Pentecost. Let's do a brief recap. Peter informed us that through faith in Jesus' name, had this man made strong. But how did this man who didn't know God could be saved through faith in his son? Because he didn't know his son. He didn't know the son nor the father. So how could he have gotten faith in God to receive healing. No, that's not possible because he is separated from God. So he couldn't have had faith in God. So we realize that he was ill because of the faith of someone else, mainly of Apostle Peter. It was because of Peter's faith in God why this lame man was ill. And that is why Peter says, the faith which is by Jesus had given 
this man perfect sounding soundness in the presence of you all recall in the previous bible study that peter made eye contact with him and then peter took him by his right hand and lifted him up and in doing this while he was doing this he was imparting his faith in christ to this man this man received it and got healing no this is contrary to what happened today in today's in Christendom today, a person, a preacher, will, um, healing someone would lay his hand on the person and declare healing in the name of Jesus, and the person wouldn't 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 be healed. And when asked why, he would tell you because the, per, the recipient never exercised faith in God. But in this scripture, this scripture is teaching us the contrary. It teaching us that it's the it's the faith of the man of God, which is the instrument, which moti, which channel that healing from God to the recipient, and not the recipient's faith. But I think this this has happened because people are not brave enough and to own up to this responsibility, and declare, or they are ignorant of it, because it is very clear here. That if you know not God, you cannot exercise faith in God. So this man was made whole because of the faith in the name of Jesus that Peter exercised in the Lord. Peter channeled his faith from God to this man, imparted it to him, and he received it, got up, and was healed. And this is what Christendom need to do today. So this puts the burden on the preacher, the, 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 the instrument that God is using, instead of the recipient of healing. It, it now becomes the, the responsibility of the, the vessel that God is using to exercise faith and not the recipient. And I know where this, this, um, this belief comes from. There was a man... Um, who, who Jesus healed and the Lord said to him by your faith but it has to be by his faith because he must have faith in the Lord to receive anything but even when you look through scriptures you will find that everybody who got healed by Jesus or any other disciple it was because of the faith of Jesus or any other disciple that healed those persons and not the individual's faith in Christ because these people are separated from God they have no faith in God how can they be healed when they have no faith this experience that this healing experience that they are going to encounter now will bring them without any doubt inextricably bound up in God they will never be separated from him because they will realize that there is power in God and there is power in this name there's power in this belief so this way they will you will like you know secure them secure them to be the belief that Jesus Christ is Lord but we have learned the contrary all our lives I've heard it so many times but today we find out differently another thing I want to point out that this man was over 40 years old and we will find that in Acts 4 verse 22 so he was about 40 and the significance of this is that anytime healing happens in the name of Jesus the honor is God and the glory is God so this person must be known as the, the, the person being ill must be known by everybody that he was sick healing for an extended time so there, sh there will be no doubt in their mind that the power of God heal him the honor is the Lord and the glory is the Lord he must get the glory from the healing and that's exactly what Peter did Peter said this man who you know and he's been he has been lame for 40 years and or more they know that because they saw him and many of them know him as lame for all their life so without a doubt they were amazed when he got up and walked because this must have been some awesome power that this preacher 
um, has why this man could walk. And this is for the glory of God. This is not, and Peter didn't take any credit for it either. He rightly said that this happened because of the power of God. So, it must be known by everybody that this man had experienced this condition for 40 years. So, similarly today, it must be known for God to get the glory. It must be known that this such a person who needs healing has been ailing or has this condition, whatever condition that is, for an extended time. It must be well established in everybody's mind. So when the power of God comes down, everybody will know that this is the awesome power of God. The almighty power of God. And uh, finally, Peter and John are just vessels. They have no power of their own. They never claim it. So anyone you encounter who tell you that they have the power to heal you, run. Because power belongs to God and God alone. I want to thank you for your time. Thanks for stopping by. If you are new to my channel and you like how I teach, I encourage you to subscribe. I also encourage you to enable notification, all notification, so that whenever time I upload a new video, you will be notified. I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. The blessings of the Lord are on you. And if the Lord tarries or allows, I'll see you in another video. Take care.